So once you've built your satellite, the obvious next step is build your own home nuclear fusion reactor with parts you've sourced on eBay. To explain how, Mark Suppers. Hello. All right. So uh, for the last four years, I've been building a working nuclear fusion reactor in Brooklyn. And this is the fusion reactor, uh, what it looks like. And um, this is what nuclear fusion looks like. This is the hot plasma. Um, and right in that ball in the center is uh, deuterium ions colliding head on and uh, producing fusion. And we've uh, actually achieved fusion in the lab. And um, pretty exciting. <laughs> so um, this, is a, this is like a kind of a picture of the whole uh, apparatus and the setup. So when I tell people what I'm doing, that I'm building a nuclear fusion reactor, almost always the first question I get is, is the government watching you? And the answer is that yes, <laughs> the government is watching me. This is the New York Fire Department paid a visit to my lab um, after uh, I got some press on the project. <clears throat> so the device I'm building is called a polywell. And it was invented by Robert Boussard. This is Dr. Boussard. Uh, he died uh, a couple years ago, but before he died, he gave one presentation um, at a Google Tech Talk, and he basically introduced to the world this invention that he'd been working on for over 20 years in secret uh, for the U.S. Navy. And um, I remember watching this video, and I was just... Uh, I was awestruck. I was like, wow, this is a really fresh idea for producing energy, uh, clean energy. And uh, I became obsessed with the idea. And uh, I started reading everything I could about it. This is, what the, in, this is the machine that he built uh, with the Navy research. Um, and you can see a computer monitor in the background there. And it's not that big, actually. And so I, the more I thought about it, you know, I learned how it worked and what it was made of. Those, those things are basically electromagnetic coils. And uh, I, I just started thinking that I could build this thing. I'm like, I'm pretty sure I could build it. Um, and that idea really stuck in my head. And so um, one thing led to another, and I uh, at some point undertook the adventure of trying to build one of these machines, kind of to see uh, what happens. It's sort of a mystery machine. We don't really know how it behaves or what it's, what's, what it's capable of. Um, so the way that I uh, approached this was with open source. Uh, I come from the web development world, and so open source is just completely eat, eaten software, and so that seemed like a good starting point for uh, this project, but it was a little foreign for hardware. You're starting to see some hardware development, like uh, MakerBot was a notable hard, open source hardware product. Uh, and so I kind of took that as encouragement and said, well, let's see how far we can push this and, and let's see what happens. I, I had no idea. Um, so some of the tools that I used to make this happen, uh, a lot of them came from the normal open source software world, so like GitHub for sharing code. Um, and then a, and a blog is really the main tool uh, that I use to kind of communicate this project. And so there's four years worth of blog posts up there now. Um, and one of the things that I wasn't expecting, um, but that became really apparent as I started doing this was uh, the community that formed around the project and the comments I would get. And so I, when I went into this, I was an amateur. I had no training or experience in any of this. And no, I've never made anything uh, except for software. Um, so I didn't know any electrical engineering or any... Um, you know, uh, how to build these things, or mechanical engineering, or vacuum chambers, or high voltage. And so really, the, the blog was a way of connecting with a community. And eventually, over a course of a couple of years, it got to the point where real physicists and real electrical engineers from all over the world, and, and a lot of like major research institutes were following the blog and commenting on it. So I would do, th I would, uh, do you know? I would try to build something and it would fail miserably, and I'd post the results of the failure on the blog, and uh, inevitably somebody in the comments would explain what I was doing wrong. So that was really amazing. Um, and so one tool that's very specific but was very helpful to me was this: the iFi card. It's basically is just a um, 
card for your camera that has Wi-Fi in it. So as soon as you take a picture, it puts it online. And so this allowed me to take hundreds of pictures every day, and they're time stamped, and uh, it's a really easy way to, uh, you know, broadcast these, uh, you know, data or like readouts from monitors or d indicators. And so uh, it's that was exciting because because uh, really the project's very visually rich too. It's it's I, and I think the pictures are really worth looking at. So another major tool was, uh, believe it or not, there is a whole community of people building amateur nuclear reactors. This was another reason that I decided to give it a shot. Now, typically, what these guys are building is, is a device called a fuser, which is a precursor to the polywell. It was the inspiration for the polywell. And uh, I, um, I'm building a polywell, so, so I'm taking this kind of uh, this history and uh, bringing it forward. Interesting fact, the original fuser was invented by the guy who invented television, Farnsworth Fuser. Um, so eBay is a big tool. I got, you just would not believe the stuff you can get on eBay. Um, this is a vacuum chamber. So this is a really high quality vacuum chamber that you can get right now. This is actually an auction ongoing. You could buy this if you wanted for a pretty reasonable price, 400 bucks. I mean, you can get high powered lasers on eBay. You can get just, incredibly dangerous high voltage stuff. Uh, it's really dangerous, um, and uh, I love it. It's, it's, such a, it's such a playground. I feel like it's uh, my 12-year-old self is getting to do everything it, my 12-year-old self wanted to do for real. Um, so here's a picture of me. This is the first vacuum chamber that I bought. Uh, it, didn't end up wor it did not work, <laughs> as it turns out, but the beautiful thing is if you buy the wrong thing on eBay, you can just go ahead and sell it back to eBay, which I did with this. It was quite a lot to ship it, though. <laughs> so here, here's a breakdown of what parts I bought on eBay. It's probably about 90% of the projects uh, I bought on eBay. Um, 3D printing, another big tool that I use. Uh, this kind of green shape uh, was 3D printed. This is just an armature holder for an electron gun that I was working on. Um, and What's really exciting is with 3D printing, now you not only do plastic, but you can do ceramics and stainless steel and brass. And so these are materials that you can actually put into a nuclear reactor, and they will hold up to the abuse. And so I'm just getting into experimenting with that. This is a test piece um, that is, I'm testing out. The, the part on the, on the end is 3D printed, and I welded it to a vacuum flange. And so this was a test to see if we could use a 3D printed part in a vacuum situation. Here's another 3D printed part. This is an early prototype for a polywell core. That's the core of the device that I'm building. Um, and I, just a shout out to Wikipedia, man, I love it. Like, <laughs> I don't know what I'd do without Wikipedia. Uh, it's just such a great resource for everybody. So also too with uh, funding is now largely solved. Um, you can, uh, you know, with Kickstarter, uh, raise money. I did a Kickstarter about, uh, a couple of years ago now, and back then $3,000 seemed like a lot of money, but uh, now there are multi-million dollar Kickstarters happening, which is very encouraging, and so I may go back to that well at some point. And this is, uh, I'd like to talk about learning. So this is after I have achieved fusion, and I bought this kit about how to learn electronics. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> that's, I still didn't know everything that I really should. Uh, and so kind of what I want to talk about here is how uh, it, it's a very relaxed learning environment. If you're doing a project uh, in an open source fashion as opposed to like an academic setting, you can learn at your own pace. And there's no shame in not knowing something. So uh, I had no shame in this that, you know, even though I was working on this supposedly uh, ambitious project, um, I was still, you know, playing around with the kit and really like getting how does a capacitor really behave and you know, how do these circuits function? It helps, though, to have the oscilloscope as you're doing it. Um, and then, you know, now I've graduated to making some pretty cool prototypes. So these are power supplies that uh, feed the electron gun. <coughs> so this is an example of failure in the project. I think the failure is really important uh, for doing something like this. It's really all failure. That's the, the backbone of the project. And so what happened here was that coil was an electromagnetic coil I was uh, testing, and the goal is to put a, just a tremendous current through it. And the first time I succeeded, this is what happened. It was so much current, it turned into such a powerful magnet that it jumped across the desk and wrapped itself around a transformer. 
Uh, and so some of the successes, though, it's, it's actually, it's been a pretty fr fruitful project. The first major success was uh, this plasma, and this was a very exciting moment seeing this. Um, you know, Harris um, stood up on land. Um, and this was another really big moment. This was achieving nuclear fusion. So these bubbles you see in this test tube are traces of neutrons that came out of the, the fusion reactor. Uh, and so this is a pretty reliable way to tell if you've achieved fusion or not. Um, this is levitating a superconducting magnet. The superconductor is actually the um, tan uh, material below, and then that's a magnet levitating above it in liquid nitrogen. Um, this is the actual polywell core that I made that is functioning. Now, what I did here was, uh, as I was in the middle of this project, a uh, research paper came out from Sydney, Australia, and they built a small polywell, and it was the first uh, academic research on the polywell that wasn't Navy funded. And so I saw this, and I saw what they built, and it seemed like a really good opportunity uh, as like a wedge into the project. So I decided to replicate their experiment. And you know, this is a crucial part of science that I don't think gets enough credit, is the replicating an experiment. Um, you know, all the attention goes to the new discovery. Um, but I felt like it was a perfect place to start for a project like mine, because by replicating it, you have a lot of the unknowns are already solved, and, and it's really about you know, uh, building this device, and you know how it's supposed to work, and so, so you have a framework uh, to work from. But then once you've done it, you have learned so much that you have a position to go beyond it. Um, and this is the result. Uh, now this is really exciting. It doesn't look like much. It's just a trace in an oscilloscope. Um, but what this is, is inside of that polywell core, when the magnets are turned on, this is capturing electrons and compressing them into the center of the core. And that makes that point more negative in electrical potential. So basically what you're seeing here is the voltage in the center of, the, of that polywell core dropping down. And in the terminology of the, this research, that's called a potential well. So this was the deepest potential well that we created in a very exciting moment. Uh, and what this represents is effectively reproducing the results of the experiment that was done in Sydney, Australia. Uh, and then this is the step beyond that experiment. So once we reproduced the results uh, from Sydney, um, I thought to myself, well, what happens if you have only an electron population and not a mixed uh, deuterium electron population? And so I created a handmade hot cathode electron gun, and that's what's glowing in the window there. And so this is sort of like what's inside of an old-fashioned TV. Um, where it's shooting electrons at the screen, but instead I'm shooting electrons into the core of this polywell, and then when I turn the magnets on, it squeezes those electrons into the center. Now the crazy thing is when I actually ran this, I got the opposite of what I expected. So I have no idea what that means. It probably just means that my equipment's broken. And so, so uh, a, a sort of summary of um, the open source nature and how, how it applies generally to science and I think the biggest thing is uh, switching from the review publish process to um, publish review. And so I'm publishing every day in the, in the lab as the research is happening. We don't know what the outcome is gonna be as it's happening. And some of the benefits of that is um, you get input into the re research itself and the actual goals of the research. So instead of, after it's all said and done and you put it out there, uh, you get insight into um, maybe what you should be doing. Um, by using an open source approach, you know, you're basically uh, opening it up to anybody to, to participate, and it lowers the barrier of entry um, to participating in science, because I never really felt it was re realistic to go through the university system, and I, I wasn't qualified to. I didn't have the credentials for that. Um, so, so some other advantages, you know, now we have all these tremendous resources online, like uh, MIT Courseware and Wikipedia. Um, so there's really, all of the raw material you need is out there to do your own research. And even the funding and even the, um, you know, the, uh, the community platforms, it's all right there. So I think it's a very exciting moment in science. And uh, we're, we're seeing the, this open source 
idea applied to science now. Um, but what I'm hoping to achieve with this project is to really push the boundaries, because uh, something like nuclear fusion, I think, is considered off limits, uh, typically, for something like this approach. Um, and uh, if you would like to know more about this project, um, just Google these words, and you'll find my blog. Thank you very much. Do try this at home. Oh, <laughs>